Hey everybody, it's Katie. Um, I wanted to uh, do a video on a card that I made last night. Um, it's a tent card and it's featuring our new uh, shaker card and confetti die cuts um, as well as our decorative borders. Um, the card I'm going to make tonight isn't exactly like this, but it's close enough that you'll get the gist of it and you can make your own. I'm going to be using the new boutique line from Close to My Heart. And so settle in, grab a cup of coffee, and uh, watch. So I have um, all my pieces cut. This is going to serve as the base of the card. And it is cut to four inches by nine and a quarter. And we are just going to score this piece of paper. And from the left, you're going to score at four, eight, eight and a half, and nine. And so that little tab over there, that's what we're going to um, adhere to the front of our card. And then this is going to be the actual tent portion. So again, this piece of car, uh, cardstock measures four by nine and a quarter, and I've scored uh, from the left four inches, eight inches, eight and a half, and nine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and kind of loosely fold those right now. And your half inch scores will actually be an accordion style. And so that's what will create um, the tent. So can you see it coming together? Okay. So the way this works is this is going to be our front panel. And I have our um, shaker and confetti um, thin cuts. And so we're going to be using this one, which is kind of a stitched border. Um, it's three inches in diameter from edge to edge. And then we're going to be using this one for the inside of the circle. And then also we're going to use the little stars that this punches out. Um, I also have, for my card front, I have a white piece of cardstock that measures three and a half by three and a half, and then I have a piece of B&T in the ballerina color, um, and it is three and three eighths by three and three eighths, and that's just to create that tiny little border um, around there. And so we're going to be using this thin cut as well, the star one to punch out the center and I've gone ahead instead of lining up it's it was hard enough to line up this piece and this piece um, and as you can see um, it kind of just didn't very well but I went ahead and I adhered this ballerina BNT to the white daisy and if you run it through twice um, into your um, die cut machine then it's it's uh, thin enough that this thin cut will cut both layers. So I am not going to do that on camera. I'm going to go off and do that off to the side. Or actually, yeah. Uh, I will do it on camera. It just it takes up the bulk of um, my shot here. But we'll do it. you all are enjoying your Saturday evening. Um, we didn't do much. It's been kind of rainy here. Um, it actually, first day of fall, it actually felt like fall. That was nice. That hardly ever happens in my neck of the woods. So it doesn't have to be precise. Um, you'll just need to kind of eyeball it. And I usually try to hold it very still and then um, you know, put like a side down and then hold it. If I was just die cutting and I wasn't actually using um, the outer edge of this, if I was just using the center, I wouldn't be that precise. 
but you, you want a pretty good frame on this. So again, I'm running it through once and you can kind of tell when the thin cut, um, when you get past it because it, the pressure kind of releases. And then I'm going to run it through again just to make sure we cut through both of those layers. There we go, we did cut through both. It's a little off center, but it's okay. And I'm just gonna take my micro tip scissors and punch these stars out kind of up here at the top of my workspace. You can use a paper piercer, whatever you have handy. It's just my macro tip scissors are always handy. Okay, I got all of those out. So the next thing we're going to do, again, remember that this is our front panel, the one that's just scored at the four inch, and then this is our back panel. And so I want to um, use the same die cut and cut out of this peacock cardstock. And you're just going to eyeball it. The good thing about using that stitched frame, I'll show you in a little bit, it kind of covers the edge um, and so you won't see um, you won't see any tiny um, discrepancies in lining up the image. And this one you only have to run through once because it's only that one um, piece of cardstock. So there we go. And I always save this and I'll have a layout to share with y'all um, here in just a little while, probably maybe later this week. Um, a layout that I did for my presentation um, at Close to My Heart's annual convention. Um, I got these shaker card and um, confetti thin cuts to play with. And the way it works is I didn't know, I don't get names of things. It's just kind of prototype. And so, um, I didn't actually know that it was for shaker cards. And so I kind of had to come up, um, I thought they were just thin cuts. So I used it just like that. I didn't, I didn't use it as a shaker. So then the next piece I'm going to cut is I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And this is going to be cut with the stitched border and it's going to kind of serve as our frame to the shaker. Um, it's B and T, which um, is just a little heavier than regular paper, but not quite as thick as cardstock. And so again, I just have one layer, so I'm going to just run it through once. Sometimes I can pull it, yeah. So I'm going to attempt to detach this. Sorry about that shaking. So see, so now we've got pretty colors going on. Um, we've got these this inside circle I can use for something else. Who knows? Okay, so I'm gonna grab um, our card base again, and remember that this is the back side, but this is the front panel that's gonna flip over. I have already pre-stamped using the uh, boutique card making stamp set. I've already pre-stamped our sentiment and I'm just going to center it right here. I'm going to make sure it's up the right way. 
And so this piece is cut um, to three and a half by three and a half. The colors I used um, were Ballerina Peacock and then Second Generation Lagoon. On my card that I made last night, this is actually um, back here is a PML card. So it made this card really easy. Um, I just cut the card down just a tiny bit just to account for the folds. Okay, so what I have to make the shaker is um, one of our foam sheets, one of the acetate sheets that comes with it, and then I have um, just some gold acetate. Um, it's called our Gold Fundamentals, and it is actually on um, sale right now on my website. My website is right there, www.scrapandkatie.ctmh.com. And um, it has a protective film on it. I went ahead on the circle and started it. I apologize, but I didn't start it on this one. I learned this technique from one of my fellow um, extravaganza presenters. She did it out of necessity. She didn't have her acetate sheets yet. I'm doing it as um, out of hoarding. <laughs> On this one, I actually used two of the acetate sheets that come with it, but now I'm left with a foam circle that doesn't have an acetate. And so I didn't, I opened up a new package of acetate, I mean of the shakers. So I, I didn't want to do that on this new package. So see that it's the back side and that film just comes right off of there. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this polka dotted for the back side. And then I'm going to use the regular acetate um, for, the, for the top of the shaker. So I'm just taking our liquid glass and just running a thin bead around that circle. Not too close to the circle because it, um, being that it is acetate, if you run it too close once you put the acetate down, that liquid glass is just going to smush all the way around out the window and then it's kind of hard to clean up. So again, this is the back side, so I want my gold um, polka dots to go face down on here. Uh, liquid glass dries pretty fast. There, it's smooshing. So I'm just going to apply some pressure there just to make sure it's really good and adhered. So see, isn't that going to be pretty, those gold dots in front of that? And then as well as once we add kind of the shaker. Okay, so since I still have some liquid glass there that's not dry yet, I'm actually going to work like this. Um, so how this is going to work is I'm going to take this, the way these come is this little outer foam, 3D foam is what's going to actually um, create the shaker box. And then all these insides can just be used um, for something else. And this foam is some of the stickiest I have ever worked with, which is good. Um, when you're working with the acetate, it's got to be pretty sticky. Um, otherwise, that slick surface will just slide off of there. It also is pretty thin, so it doesn't keep its shape very well. So I have a couple of ways that I like to apply this, but for ease, um, I'm just going to apply it the way intended. So you just lay, again, this is the front of the card, and you just lay that sucker down. And then we're going to take these stars over here that um, were created by using that thin cut, and we're going to use some of those for the inside, and then a few of the gold sequins um, 
loose sequins that are also available now in our new holiday expressions. So I got those going on. And then here are the loose sequins and the gold. It also comes in silver. But I figured since we're going to use the saffron stitched piece and then we're going to use some um, gold sequin ribbon, I figured I would use the uh, gold sequins. And just a few. I don't want to overload since we have all those stars in there. I don't want to overload this card with gold. <laughs> Um, so I've emptied everything out. So now it's time to pull. I got a stray sequence there. Now it's time to pull this sticky part off. And sometimes you, when you go to pull that, it pops and then you have some stray sequins. But if you'll just use your nonstick micro tip scissors, it'll pull right off of there. So usually what I do is this side, um, these acetate sheets only have one side that has the film on it. So I usually pull that back and that's what I put down because this I can actually use my t-shirt or something um, to get off of there. So usually the static will grab one or two. You see it grab that one, kind of that one. I can probably get that one loose. I am not worried about it at all. So as you can see, our shaker box is taking shape here. Um, then this is going to be on top. And then this is going to be on top of this. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to this. And I'm going to use liquid glass. And I'm just going to kind of see, um, it looks like it has probably about a sixteenth of an inch border on the inside. Just kind of want to eyeball that before I get glue all over it and then try to decide, hey, how does this fit on here? Sorry, trying to get my liquid glass um, unclogged. I'm not going to use a whole lot of this, just kind of dabbing dots around will work. And again, um, 16th of an inch, so that's pretty tight. So I'm happy with that. That's close enough. Okay, so in cutting this, as you can see, this side is kind of off. So I think, but see this side has a little mark on it. I don't know if I had something on my fingers or what. So actually I think I, I'd rather hide the mark than hide this. So I'm going to put the mark up at the top because we're going to tie that ribbon on there. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to pop this off as well. And so I could either use our thin 3D foam tape um, it looks like I've got thin here and the regular size there, but I'm almost out of that regular size. But, you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the squares that it comes with. So again, these are pretty sticky. Um... 
the important part about this, I think, in my mind, would just be to make sure that they're um, straight because you're gonna be able to see them. Um, not from the front, but when they turn it to the side, you're gonna be able to tell. So that's gonna be my main focus. Um, it does not have to be, um, you, you don't have to have 3D foam tape every inch of this thing, just enough where it doesn't sag in places. So I'm going to use some of these little outer ones and I'm going to put the straight edge to the edge. You know what I mean? That straight edge there instead of the curved. Again, just for aesthetics if someone were to see um, this underside. And I think that's going to be, um, I think that's going to be good. This one is probably going to have to come up. You have to keep in mind that um, this has got to fit in here. So I did not keep that in mind. So this one is probably going to have to come up too. And I'm going to have to use a um, smaller one. Actually, I don't think I'll use one on there. Okay. Here she goes. I'm just going to throw these down just so y'all don't have to watch me painstakingly put them in the uh, trash can as I discard them. Um, okay, so my little um, spot is going to go up at the top. I didn't really cut that very well either. Okay, so there is our card. This is the flap, and that is what is going to be adhered on the top. So I'm just going to use liquid, I mean, on the bottom of the top layer. So I'm going to use liquid glass right there. The good thing about these tent cards is they float, they fold flat. So if you wanted to mail them, uh, you definitely could do that. Glass is pretty hard. And so then this just gets put right there at the bottom. And you just want to press down. Press, 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 press. Should be dry. Can y'all see it taking shape? Isn't that cute? I just love the addition of those gold heart. I mean, those gold uh, polka dots. And I love that it looks like these stars are maybe sticking the static. It's making them stick to that top piece of acetate. So it almost looks like they're floating. Can y'all see that? Okay, so now let's tie some ribbon. So, the last time I checked, I'm going to use our peacock stitch ribbon. Last time I checked, this roll, which is five yards, was um, in the clearance section of my website for $2. It's a great deal. So, if you were to go and get the ribbon plus the um, gold fundamentals acetate, 
that's three this is two literally your shipping would probably be the same as um, your product unless you want to throw some boutique paper in there which I always do anything to um, make my product more than my shipping so we're gonna tie the the ribbon off to the left side and I'm gonna attempt to just all I did was I cut some of this is our new um, gold sequin ribbon and that looks probably about five inches and I just cut a strip and I'm just folding it in half and I'm gonna put it right there actually I think I'm gonna glue dot that first just to make sure it doesn't move no I don't need to okay so again about five inches I'm gonna fold it in half I'm gonna put it right there and we're just gonna tie a bow again I want to make sure that that sequins stays where it should it did not do what I wanted it to do so you know what we may not use that sequined ribbon I may just use that And of course, I use my non-stick, which they don't stick, but you know, if you don't have craft, if you don't have ribbon scissors, then it's hard, which I do have. I probably have like five pair of, um, not those. probably have five pair of these micro tip. And so the ones with the ribbon on it, the ones with the ribbon on it are the ones I usually use just for ribbon. Yeah, there's just no way to put that on there. So, that's going to be that. So, here was the one I made last night with the tassels from the um, new decorative borders. And then here is the one I made tonight. So, um, I hope this inspires you to create a little bit. I hope um, it inspires you to think of see-through shakers instead of just, you know, on the top shakers. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I will get back with you. If you would like to purchase any of the items you saw here or anything else, you can check out my website and um, let me know what you think if you decide to make one. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching. Bye.